Hi, my name's Terry Clark. My name's Lerno Lewis. I'm Sam Pamonti. I play keyboards, sing, and play guitar. Terry McElligott. I'm a radio host here at Jazz FM 91, and I've been here since the day we went on the air. I am a uh, professional jazz drummer, and have been my whole life. Professional drummer now for the last 13 years, and I've been playing drums since I was two years old. Radio station had to make some kind of change, and that change was going to be to flip to an all jazz format. And I said, just like that, I have to be part of it. Playing music, well, it was in my family. My brother played the guitar. Well, I grew up in a really musical um, household. I mean, my dad is a musician, and has been for basically his whole life. So I grew up with music always playing in the house, whether it was my dad playing the piano or just the records he had playing on all the time. So I got a, a hairbrush and an overturned garbage can and then some pie plates and started bashing on those, so, you know, the usual. I went right down to the library, got a library card, and started to look up what jazz was all about. And I just realized it's all about, you know, I really had a fire in my belly. I really had, I knew that I was very passionate about it. So I used to practice, you know, eight hours a day and have to be dragged up for dinner just to get out of the basement. And here I am in, in my own basement. Well, my dad, being a musician and wanting me to get into jazz eventually. He had me listening to Buddy Rich. Contemporary stuff by Miles Davis. Gene Krupa, Max Roach. Chuck Berry and Elvis. Stevie Wonder is basically the reason probably I started playing music. If we stand together, who's gonna make it stop? Understanding what jazz was and what it meant to me, or at least how to improvise inside of jazz started to open up options for me playing-wise and expression-wise. I think it was a very courageous decision for the board of directors to have made the choice to go all jazz. Tremendously cr creative decision and one that required a hell of a lot of hard work over the years. So when I look back on it, I think, well, there were a lot of, a lot of late nights and early mornings involved, but would I do it again? Yeah, of course I would. I'd do it again in a second. I think a lot of people could learn a lot of things from listening to jazz music, just to even to understand where a lot of music today is coming from. It's kind of a place to go where I feel safe and happy and, uh, and it's, it's about the flow. It's about a, a jet stream that I, that's where I like to live. That's where I feel best. I don't see any end to it. Once you get into the jet stream, you can go forever. I continually enjoy it. I continually find new things to do. So I surprise myself. I've learned to express myself on the drums, which allows me to also just take other chances in certain musical situations, which allows me to take chances in life. A lot of people can learn something from jazz harmony. A lot of people can learn something from just taking chances and actually improvising, how you work over changes of a particular song. There are just concepts that you can always pull and be inspired from different styles of music. Jazz has helped me in a way, not just through the chords or the solos or those technical aspects, so much as a mindset. I feel like the mindset of jazz is just to totally open your mind and allow you to go down whatever feeling you're having in that specific moment. I think taking that from jazz for me is the most important thing it has to offer. I currently am one of the drummers with Snarky Puppy. And I also work a lot with Lila Bialy and the Lila Bialy Trio. We've been playing together now for the last 10 years. Playing with Snarky Puppy is fun. It's exciting. Um, it takes a lot of energy. What's awesome about it is you're, you're on stage with a group of people, and the one goal is to make music together. Everybody has high, like a very high level of ability to play, to hear. Most guys, they play a minimum of two instruments. So their understanding of how instruments lock together is awesome. You're now having these musical conversations at a very high level, almost, if you will, playing above the notes. My favorite project I have going right now is, is Sai Shubi, my band. 
because it's just so much fun. I mean, the guys in the band are so great, and we have so much fun playing original music. Bring it to the cynical. Only if a dive. You get to fly free. I played with you know, most of the great musicians that there are, and each one of them teaches me something. So there's a lot to glean from these things. I did get to play with John Coltrane once, which was like a, a spiritual experience that I was not expecting and has impacted me even now, you know, 30 years later, just, just to be around somebody that is that monstrous and so such a powerful figure, but such a really gentle, really sweet guy. I mean, it was, uh, he had this aura about him that I really haven't seen. He was a master of the instrument, if you want to talk about the master, and he was always practicing. He continually practiced. He would come into the club and, and take his horn out and, and start practicing in the dressing room, and he'd come out on stage playing, and he would play a solo, and then he'd walk off stage and still practice, and he'd hear him in the dressing room still playing. I mean, this is like about devotion, uh, about following your passion, about living in the moment. Those are the kinds of things that somebody, like one person like that, can, can change your direction. So I think I was meant to be there to see him because this is still registering with me. I think one thing that can be difficult to pass on to the younger generation is an understanding and a respect for tradition. It really comes from the colleges and universities are really keeping it alive. Some of the students that I've run into in the jazz programs here at, in, in the Toronto area, some of them have now gotten to the point where they've done several albums. I went to Humber for three years. It was a great time there. I met a lot of musicians. I um, learned a lot about playing with other people, and it was a great experience for sure. I mean, school is school, right? When you're trying to teach something like the arts, I feel like sometimes when academia meets the arts, it can kind of it can butt heads a little bit. It's an ongoing learning experience. I'm, I'm constantly learning from my students and, and trying to keep up with, uh, you know, cutting edge playing and music. I find that people are starting to take parts of jazz and incorporate them. It's always kind of been happening, so like in hip-hop music, they might take samples from jazz records. People like Flying Lotus or Thundercat, people who are in love with jazz music are really taking it to a new place, which is what jazz is all about. Nowadays, it's um, jazz sensibilities over ghetto you know, funk beats, so it's trying to please everybody, which you can't do when pop music uh, tends to die out. They always kind of repackage jazz and bring it back in another in another form. One of the one of the important things is recognizing the new music, the new musicians that are out there. People might not hear it, but one artist is the weekend. So especially with his newer record, you can hear the influence of jazz or the influence of funk, which is again coming full circle, part of that cycle. For me, the one that sticks out the most would be probably Kendrick Lamar. His album, To Pimp a Butterfly, that just came out. I feel like that has a lot of jazz influences in it, for sure. I mean, even coming from all the funk, like there's so much P-funk in that album, and that's coming from jazz. I often say, I wish we had, I wish we had a dozen jazz FMs, because there's enough music out there to actually support that. What is jazz music to me? For me, and I think for most musicians, <laughs> the reward for music is not in dollar signs, it's in just the process and the biggest reward for me is whether it's finishing a song I really like or playing with some amazing musicians or getting a great reaction from a crowd. As long as I'm playing music and writing music and somebody somewhere is feeling it, then that's <laughs> all I can really ask for, you know. It's really just about how to express yourself and move people in real time, how to create in real time, and how to compose in real time. Go down the dial to where 91.1 is, turn it on and leave it on for a couple of hours. See what you think. I've always said if, you, if, you, if you're not fond of what you're hearing now, just give us 10 minutes. Give us five or 10 minutes, you're bound to hear something that you'll, 
you'd be intrigued by. I mean, why not, right? I, I think of the line that Thelonious Monk has. It's, it's, it, it, I can't tell you what the future of jazz is. It just goes. It's a special art form, precious. Something we should keep, like you keep a, a Van Gogh, that there's always room for the art form of jazz. There's always room for it. It'll never die.